Investigators are now trying to reconstruct the movements of Stephen Paddock and exploring the possibility that he had considered targeting other music festivals before settling on the one in Las Vegas. A service was held tonight for Charleston Hartfield. He's the off-duty Las Vegas police officer with ties to Metro Detroit who was killed in that attack. That service is being held the same time a Frazier man was discovering that he has a link to the Las Vegas gunman. And tonight he spoke to our Sean Lay about that chilling connection. The name of the Las Vegas shooter has been bugging Howard Baddeker here in Frazier all week long until tonight. He finally made the connection that he does have a deep connection with that gunman. Right here, Stephen Paddock. I knew him. I went to school with him. Howard Baddeker flipping back the years to make a chilling discovery. Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock was a high school classmate of his out in Sun Valley, California. And there was an even deeper connection. The two were on the tennis team together. Here I was here on the team, and here Stephen Paddock. Baddeker lived and worked in Las Vegas for years after news broke of the horrific mass shooting. Howard was busy checking on his son and sister, who still lived there, and both were okay. But then the name of the gunman was familiar to him, and he couldn't figure out why until the report today mentioned the gunman's high school, Howard's high school. Stopped eating. I ran down to the basement. I'm going through books. She had to help me find it. And there was my yearbook with the picture in it. Kind of eerie. You know, it's like they're on the same page together. That's way too close <laughs> in my book. Banneker says the thing is, nothing stood out about Paddock in high school, lending no clues about why he would open fire the way he did this week. Here's another interview that another friend of Stephen Paddock's gave. I'm going to read the article to you, and at the end of the article, I'm going to show up the 56-second video um, recording of the guy giving the um, interview. His name's Greg Pallast. Um, it says, Greg Pallast was stunned when he learned that his childhood classmate, Stephen Paddock, carried out the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history, but he wasn't surprised at all that someone from their hometown grew up to be violent. I can tell you how the bottle was loaded with gasoline, said Pallast, who is now a filmmaker, but I don't know what ignited it. Paddock isn't even the first mass killer from their school, John H. Francis Polytechnic Senior High in Sun Valley, a struggling sun-baked part of Los Angeles County, San Fernando Valley. In 2008, Bruce Jeffrey Pardo, dressed in a Santa Claus suit, and fired at fleeing party goers at his in-laws house. He killed nine people before turning the gun on himself. All too often where you begin determines where you end, said Palace, who spoke to the rap while standing outside the high school. It's a very fine line that's divided my path from Paddock's. He offered the obvious caveat that nothing justifies, forgives, or explains what Paddock did. Almost a month after Stephen Paddock opened fire on a crowd at the Country Music Festival in Las Vegas, his former classmates are still trying to understand how a boy they remembered as withdrawn and quiet could have gone on to kill 58 people and wound hundreds more before shooting himself. They described him as bright but with no close friends anyone could recall. He was very much a loner, another former classmate, film composer Michael O'Neill told The Rap. He was kind of an enigma. He'd be sitting by himself at lunch. When police broke into the 32nd story Mandalay Bay hotel room, which Paddock fired, they found handwritten calculations of distance and to directory to the crowd below. One of the officers suggested to 60 minutes that Paddock must have done the calculations online or something. But Pallas doubts he needed help to do the math. He was a real brain a math whiz, Pallas said. I noticed him in algebra. We were in the special high track classes. He finished his math test before I did, and I was quick. I was like, wow, that kid. He could have gone to Stanford or UCLA, but we didn't go to Beverly Hills High, Pallas added. We were on track to work at Lockheed Martin. Paddock worked for a predecessor of the aerospace company from 1985 to 1988 when it closed. His childhood wasn't normal. He was seven years old and living in Tucson in 1960 
when FBI agents showed up at the family's home to arrest his father, Benjamin Hoskins Paddock, was brain, a bank robber the FBI once described as psychotic. Stephen Paddock's mother, Dolores, moved her four sons to Sun Valley soon after Benjamin Paddock's arrest. He was sentenced to prison in 1961, but eventually escaped. Paddock's brother has said their father played little role in their lives after their move to California. Sun Valley is still a place for many people in transition. Today, the dusty streets where Paddock grew up is littered with tents of those who have fallen on hard times. People live out of RVs parked throughout the neighborhood. At the time, it was the bottom of the bottom, Powell said, of their old neighborhood, still overshadowed by four imposing smokestacks from a nearby power plant. In the old days when they burned coal, you couldn't see the mountains, the sky was never blue, and everything was covered with toxic coal dust. So you can imagine who would agree to live in houses like these, Powell said. Another former, former classmate, Richard Alarcon, who went on to become a California state senator, said he remembered Paddock from his Fernangelis elementary school days where the two would often play sports, including pick up football. He wasn't a sports superstar, but he wouldn't be the last one picked when we were picking teams either, Alarcon said. He was an average kid socially. Alarcon remembered a classmate competition where students were tasked with building a bridge made of balsa wood. Despite being instructed not to use any glue, Paddock's submission was all white glue. It seemed like he didn't care that everyone know he cheated, Alarcon said. We all just laughed it off. John King, another former classmate from Richard E. Bird Middle School as well as high school, said he remembered walking by Paddock's home to and from junior high every day. He was the paper boy delivering the giveaway paper, he said. If it happened to be outside when he was delivering it, we'd sometimes chat. But King says Paddock made no strong impression on him. I wouldn't call him a joiner, he said. Though classmates of Paddock, though classmates said Paddock wasn't popular with girls, he did end up marrying a former classmate, one of two short-lived and childless unions. He never raised his hand to class, Pallast went on to say. I was in his classes for 10 years. I don't remember him saying a peep unless he was called on. He made himself as invisible as possible. After school, he used his math skills to invest in real estate, work for the IRS, and gamble. He took whatever money he had, plus some money from family, and bought crappy apartments in downtown LA, and that made some money, Paolo said. But then he took his winnings and became a gambler. King said that when he and Paddock both worked for the IRS in 1978, they would often meet for casual game nights. Once a month, we'd have a nickel-dime quarter poker game at somebody's house, King said. Steve would join us every once in a while. I don't remember him as an exceptionally aggressive card player. Paddock was reportedly gambling heavily in the weeks before he snapped, according to the Times. Paddock was developed had developed a methodical style and skills that sometimes won him tens of thousands of dollars in one sitting. The Las Vegas Metro, Metro Police said they did not know Paddock's name before the shooting and believed he acted alone. A clerk at Guns and Guitars where Paddock purchased one of the rifles used during the attack told NBC News that Paddock never gave any indication or reason to believe he was unstable or unfit at any time. Steve and I had drafting. That's where we sat together, PA and both PA. I remember an English teacher, and I was in a class with him, uh, had everyone read out loud. And we found out some of our kids by the eighth grade were, and back in our junior high, were uh, illiterate. But Steve read like with, you know, like, like a guy who's obviously been reading a lot of books. And then also I remember again, I think I, that just when we took a, when I've noted that he was a math guy, I mean, we were taking algebra with in Mr. Moscone's class, Mr. Moscone's class at Bird. And, um, you know, I did the test pretty quickly, the algebra tests, because I was pretty quick at that stuff. And, but Steve beat me and it's like, no one beat, no one finishes the test before Greg Pallas. So you remember those things that stick out. Breitbart News also did an article where they had a statement from a prior uh, friend student of Stephen Paddock's. Um, it says a former high school classmate of the Las Vegas shooter recalls him as a brainy kid who tried to blend in with the regular crowd. 
Former Los Angeles City Councilman Richard Alarcon recalled Wednesday that Stephen Paddock had a dose of cynicism or irreverence towards authority. Paddock wasn't above breaking the rules. For example, if it meant turning in the best project possible for a high school computer science class. Alarcon knew Paddock growing up in California's San Fernando Valley as an average athlete who played pickup baseball and football in an after school program while the two were attending separate elementary schools. He said he would never have believed Paddock could carry out the deadliest shooting in modern history. And we are learning more today about gunman Stephen Paddock's ties to Southern California. He graduated from the LA Unified School District and Cal State Northridge. And a former LA City Councilman remembers being childhood friends with the mass shooter. CBS 2's Dave Lopez is live in Sun Valley with that part of the story. Dave. Well, like everyone else, they are totally perplexed. Uh, Paddock was a valley boy. He uh, was uh, raised here. He went to school here across the street. Polly, class of 1971. 46 years ago, Stephen Paddock was just beginning his senior year at Polly High School in Sun Valley. And one of his classmates remembers him well. He had a great sense of humor uh, in high school. Uh, I had a computer class with him. So he was sort of geeky, but not he wasn't a full-blown geek. And now that sort of geeky high school acquaintance is now accused of being the biggest mass murderer in the history of this country. And Richard Alarcon, a one-time LA City Council member, says the minute he heard the name on television the night of the massacre, he said, Wait a minute, I know a Stephen, a Stephen Paddock from elementary school and, and high school. Then he saw the picture, asked a few other high school classmates, and it was him, the same guy that he played ball with at age eight. We used to play on the after school playground on teams and everything. Just a typical American kid. After high school, Alarcon said they went their separate ways. He never saw him again. And when he heard about Sunday night. I was stunned because if, if I had to pick somebody from back in the day uh, who might have uh, done something crazy like this, it would have never been him. From Poly High, Paddock went on to school at Cal State Northridge, where he graduated in 1977 with a degree in business administration. The Cynical. Uh, I, can, I can even remember that he sort of had a, a little cynicism uh, that he don't, uh, displayed in, uh, in that class. I asked Alec Khan if he ever remembers running in the paddock at any of their high school reunions, and he told me, no, I don't remember seeing him, and if I did, I don't remember at all. Pacific Pundit posted this article on October 4th, 2017. Um, they say, well, this is interesting. A childhood friend of Scott Paddock, which they misquoted, it's Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas terrorists posted about their friendship as children in California. They became friends in junior high school called middle school back then and both shared an interest in astronomy. They also went to the same high school together, Francis Polytechnic Senior High School in Sun Valley, California. Paddock is described as a quiet, mild-mannered, tall, skinny, blonde-haired kid back then. They both graduated from Polytechnic High School in 1971. Um, Joseph Klotman, I'm sorry, is the friend that posted this. I am going to get a bigger view of this. I can't believe I'm posting this. Steve Paddock, the Las Vegas shooter, was a friend of mine when I was a kid. We met in junior high because of a mutual interest in astronomy. He joined a little astronomy club I had formed. He was at my house, I was at his house. At the time, my parents owned a weekend house in Desert Hot Springs, California, just outside Palm String Springs. Steve went with us one weekend so he and I could observe the heavens with my telescope in the dark desert skies. When I saw his name, it reminded me of the kid I knew back then, and the picture did sort of resemble him, and he was the same age as me, but it never would have occurred to me in a million years that it was him. Steve was a quiet, mild-mannered, tall, skinny, blonde-haired kid. Then, as I was visiting my mom today, my brother Ron sent me a text. Stephen Paddock graduated from Poly High School in Sun valley california in 1971 this was a year after i graduated from the same school it was him while i feel grief for the many people killed in las vegas and the hundreds in hospitals 
some with horrible wounds. I feel a special grief for Steve. I knew him. He was a friend, and he ended his life in suicide after committing one of the most horrible crimes in recent history. This is an article from the Las Vegas Review Journal that was posted on Press Reader. I am not going to read the whole article, but I'm going to start reading where um, his friend Joseph Klotchman started to write. Um, Joseph Klotchman said he knew Paddock at Francis Polytechnic High School and Richard E. Byrd Middle School both in Sun Valley, California as kids, and they had an interest in astronomy. He was quiet, very kind of mild-mannered, said Klotchman, now retired. I did sense, though, that he was a little bit troubled. It seemed like under the surface there was something bothering him, but he was quiet and mild-mannered. Earl Sandoff played tennis with Paddock. He recalled Paddock as a normal high school student. He was a very nice guy, Sandoff said. He never had any major outbursts. Looking at a photo of Paddock on a high school tennis team in 1970, Richard Levy thinks he recognizes Paddock as a former peer in his Northridge accounting classes. Levy remembers Paddock as a tall, thin, quiet man who sat with Levy in the sparsely attended accounting classes of 1970s Northridge. Now 61, a certified public accountant in Los Angeles area, Levy finished his Northridge coursework in 1977, the same year as Paddock. And there is a link in the description of this video that's got this full article um, from press release. I just wanted to read the part, you know, of the people that were giving interviews that actually knew him as a student.